Back for another round. Here is five more things that you should already know about Dota 2. You should already know these, okay? You should know them, but maybe you don't. So here we go. Five things that you should know, but maybe didn't. So number one in this video is courtesy of Topson and his play that he did against Liquid for killing the Tormentor. Turns out with Dazzle, you can actually heal the couriers. And so you can deal a lot more damage to the Tormentor if you wanted to solo kill it. This is pretty impressive and I think it's pretty useful information to know as a lot of people are playing Dazzle right now, especially in that mid lane. I would know I have to play against them and honestly, screw you guys. It is just, it's not an easy lane. Now, people are probably are going to know this, but I'm going to guarantee that there's going to be someone watching this video that is going to be like, wait, well, that, that actually includes that as well. And we're going to be talking about the attributes that you get from buying things like any sort of stats in the game. Now, you know that there's strength, intelligence, and agility, but did you know what all of the benefits from buying these are? Now, of course, if you buy the attribute of your actual hero style, so if you're a strength hero and you buy a strength attribute, you're going to get damage from those stats as well. The same goes for agility, buying agility, you get damage, and the same goes for intelligence, buying intelligence, you get, you get damage from that too. But you also get other stuff too that everybody gets. Now, strength will actually give you health and HP regen. So a lot of people will probably think that it only gives health, but it will also give you regen as well. Agility is going to give you attack speed and armor for each point. And intelligence is going to give you three things. It's going to give you mana, mana regen, and it's going to give you magic resistance. So keep in mind that getting these things are also going to give you a few different other benefits than just damage or the basic things of like strength gives health, agility gives armor, intelligence gives like mana or whatever. There's the other benefits to them as well. So be honest, did you know all of the benefits from this? Did you, did you know about that magic resistance from intelligence? Be honest, let me know in the comments. Next up is understanding what Roshan drops and when. Now we all know that Roshan probably is going to be dropping the Aegis on kill one and then on kill two you're going to get the Aegis and a piece of cheese. Most people know that. But on kill three since the new patch where we have a dire pit and a radiant pit you are going to have different benefits from killing him in each location from kill number three. On Roshan kill number three you're either going to get a refresher shard or or you're going to get a Aghanim's Blessing. Now, I would probably argue that in most situations, an Aghanim's Blessing is by far a lot better because it's so damn expensive and the Refresher Shard is a one-time use and then it's gone. So, if you are planning on killing Roshan for the third time, let him walk to the Radiant side of the map before you kill him, if you can do so. This is going to mean that he will have an Aghanim's Scepter or an Aghanim's Blessing, even better, rather than having a Refresher Shard. If he is on the Dire side, you'll get the Refresher Shard. And if he's on the Radiant side, then you will get the Aghanim's Blessing. And then from here onwards, so every fourth, fifth, sixth kill, this will be the same from here on out. But Roshan number three, giving you the right item, could absolutely be game changing. So keep it in mind, if your team is going to kill Rosh for the third time and he is on the Dire side, maybe consider asking them to wait until he moves to the Radiant side so you can grab that Blessing. Did you know that most of you guys that watch these videos all the time aren't actually subscribed? So if you are someone who's enjoying this video, one, I have a ton more of these videos coming, but also most of you aren't subscribed, so please do check that you are and click that sub button. It will help this small channel grow an absolute ton. And of course, the more subs, the better the channel does, and the more time I can spend making content for you guys. That being said, let's get back to the video. As you know, the beginning of the game starts at nighttime, and you can actually check if the enemy has a ward here because towers, this is kind of like a double tip, Towers don't have max range or max vision at nighttime. You actually have to get pretty close before they can hit you, right? So if you're stood here outside the circle by holding alt and you can see the circle, if you're stood inside the circle and it's not hitting you, you know they don't have vision of you right now. And if they had a ward and they could see you, if the tower did attack you when you walked up this hill and stood here, the same goes for on the radiant side as well if you stood here. If they had vision of you, that means they have a ward either over here or over here or just right where you are. So, chuck a sentry down like right here. Then you'll be able to find that ward, de-ward it as well. And if it doesn't hit you, this means you can safely ward yourself and know that they don't see you doing that. As long as the tower doesn't hit you in nighttime, then you're absolutely good to go. Number five. Did you know if you're a Templar Assassin player, you can actually use Refraction to not have a blink go on cooldown. That's right. If you get hit while refraction is on, it doesn't actually count as taking damage, of course, because it only removes a refraction stack. This means that blink doesn't go on cooldown. So if you get initiated on and you have refraction up, 
you can still blink even if you've just been hit. It will not be unavailable. This is super useful and important. A lot of people will use blink to initiate into a fight, but a lot of the time you may want to go in first if you can run in with the slow from your ultimate and then use blink to either continue chasing or to get yourself out of sticky situations. This is super useful and of course it's something that you definitely want to be taking advantage of in your own games. There you go, five more things that you should know about Dota 2 but maybe you didn't. Did you know all of these? If you didn't, let me know which one you didn't know about in the comments and if you can think of any more that you would like me to use in a different video, drop them in the comments down below and I will screenshot your name if I do use it and throw it in the video as credit and you'll, you'll get a little bit of fame anyway i hope you all enjoyed if you did leave a like on the video share it with your friends and also subscribe to the channel it helps out turn it's free to do and uh, it'll, it'll make my day anyway i'll catch you on the next one see you later guys bye